Welcome to Electron Line. So let's try a different path this time. An alternate path from what we would call the path of least action, which would be when we throw a projectile out at 10 meters per second from a height of 4.9 meters. We know the projectile will take this parabolic path, will land on the ground one second later, 10 meters away. And when we calculated the action for that path, the path of least action, we ended up with 34 joules per second a couple of videos ago. In the previous video, we tried the alternate path coming straight down this way. This time, we're going to take an alternate path like this. We're going to travel at the same height for a certain amount of time and then come straight down like this. Notice the first 0.9 seconds will make it 9 meters out. And then for the last part of the path, we'll just take it down this way. So we have a constant velocity down and a constant velocity out. How do we calculate those velocities, those heights? Well, for the first 0.9 seconds, the height will remain at h sub naught, and then the last 0.1 second, we're coming down at that steep curve. Notice the velocity in the y direction for the last one tenth of a second will be the distance over time, 4.9 meters divided by 0.1 second, that will be 49 meters per second in the vertical direction and 10 meters per second in the horizontal direction. So the velocity for the first 0.9 seconds will be 10 meters per second, and for the last tenth of a second will be the square root of the sum of the squares of the x and the y velocities, 10 meters per second in the x direction, 49 meters per second in the y direction. Notice the height will be 4.9 meters for the first 0.9 seconds, and for the last 0.1 second, the average height will be 2.45 meters. Since the velocity in the vertical direction is a constant, we can simply take the average height to come up with the average potential energy over that, the, over that last 0.1 second. Our graphs for potential energy will look like this, and for kinetic energy will look like this. Now, here you might think, well, since we keep the potential energy as high as possible for very long, and we keep the kinetic energy as low as possible for very long, when we subtract the two, we may end up with a smaller number by subtracting a much greater potential energy average over that one second time span. Remember, the restrictions again are that it takes the same amount of time as our parabolic path, which is exactly one second, and that the beginning and end locations, starting and end point, have to be the same. All right, let's calculate now the action. We're not going to write down the equations. We'll make it up as we go because there's mostly constant values, and we'll have to integrate twice, once from 0 to 0.9 and once from 0.9 to 1 second. So the action is going to be first the kinetic energy, so the integral from 0 to 0 0.9 of the kinetic energy times dt. And the kinetic energy well, comes from this constant velocity, so it'll be 1 half times the mass times v sub x squared times dt plus the integral from 0 0.9 to 0 0.1 of 1 half the mass times the velocity, which will now be the velocity in the x direction squared plus the velocity in the y direction squared, both constants times dt. Subtract from that the integral. Now we're subtracting the potential energy integral from 0 to 0 0.9 of the potential energy, which will be mgh sub naught times dt. That will be a constant. And now subtract again the last portion from 0 0.9 to 1 of mg, and here I'm going to use the average height, which is h sub naught over 2 times dt. And that's acceptable because the velocity in the y direction will be a constant. All right, that is now the action for our alternate path. Let's see what we end up with, and let's see if the number is smaller than 34 joule times seconds. All right, let's see what we get. S equals, all these are constants, so we get 1 half, times the mass, times the velocity in the x direction squared, times dt integrated, which will be t from 0 to 0 0.9. Okay, And then we have plus 1 half times the mass, which is 1, times 10 squared plus 49 squared, and that would be times t evaluated from 0 0.9 to 1. So that the difference of that will be 0 0.1. Okay, minus the mass times g, 9.8, times the height, 4.9, times 
times the time evaluated from zero point or from zero to zero point nine and then minus mass times nine point eight g times the average height which is four point nine divided by two evaluated from t going from zero point nine to one. Wow, that's a little crowded here, so make sure we don't get confused. Okay, let's figure out what those numbers are. So S equals, so that's 0.9 times all this, that's 100 divided by 2, which is 50, multiplied times 0 0.9. Plus, I think we need a calculator for that. All right, 49 squared plus 100. Okay, let's do it like this. So that's equal to 1 half times 2501 multiplied times the time difference of 1 to 0.9, that would be 0 0.1, like this. So that's the second part of the kinetic energy term. So this here is the kinetic energy, two terms. And now minus, right here we get uh, 9.8 times 4.9, times 0 0.9 and then minus 9.8 times 4.9 divided by 2 and times 0 0.1 because that's a much shorter duration. Okay, and these two terms are the potential energy terms. So what do we get? S equals so we get uh, 50 times 0 0.9, that's 45, uh, plus 0 0.5 times 2501 times 0 0.1. That would be 125. So we have 45 plus 125 minus, so that gives us 170, and minus this. So we have 9.8 times 4.9 times 0.9 equals, that gives us 43. And then plus, because I have the negative in front, so let's see what that is equal to. So we had 98 times 4.9 divided by 2 times 0.1 equals, that's 24. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. Uh, I wouldn't expect that to be that big. So let me try that again, make sure I got that right. So we have 9.8 times 4.9 divided by 2 equals times 0.1, there we go, 2.4, 2.4, there we go. And so S equals 170 for the kinetic energy portion minus 45.4, which is equal to, so 170 minus 45.4 equals 124.6 joules times seconds. All right, now notice the difference. It is clearly a much bigger number. The action is much larger. You might say, well, since potential energy is so large and was tracted, how can that be still such a big number? But notice that the kinetic energy portion right here shoots up very high, even though for a very short period of time, 49 squared is a huge number. And therefore, because we didn't travel very fast initially, and we didn't make it down here, we had to travel really, really fast to make it down there. An unlikely scenario, the action is much larger, and therefore we will not take that path. The path of least action is still the bare poly path. So we try to pad on the inside, we try to pad on the outside. In either case, we got a bigger action calculation, and therefore we know that the object will not take those paths. And that hopefully gives us a good intuitive feel for what we mean by the path of least action. It's clearly the path objects will take and now what we're going to need to do next is we need to kind of combine, we kind of need to figure out where that equation comes from, how does that relate to F equals ma and the energy equations and finally we will prove that there's no other path but the path of least action that any object can take. So that will come in the next so many videos, it'll take us a few videos to work through all that material but stay tuned and we'll show you how that's done.